Hi friends, welcome, Anto here. Today we're gonna see how we can use workload identity in GKE. I'm making this video because of a request that I received in a other video that I made. Today we're gonna see how we can use workload identity and um, what type of problems it solves. So let's start by explaining the problem we are trying to solve. So I have already pre-provisioned the Kubernetes cluster with the workload identity federation enabled. So it's one of the options when you configure the cluster. So now we're gonna deploy an Nginx deployment and we're gonna expose it. And then we're gonna try to fetch some data as part of an init container. If you don't know what init containers are, you can watch my other videos where I describe what the init containers are. So essentially in the init container, we're gonna do a pre-configuration of our pod. We're gonna fetch this data. So it's a HTML page from a GCS bucket. And from this, bucket, we're going to mount the data inside our Nginx container, and then we're going to expose that. So I'm going to show you how you can do this with uh, using workload identity. So we're going to authenticate as a Google service account uh, through our Kubernetes service account. I'm going to do this step by step. So it may take a bit long, but hopefully you're going to have a, a good understanding of how everything works. So now let's start. We're going to create a Kubernetes deployment. As you can see, we are doing an Nginx. We are exposing this using a service type node port. So, and this should be created in a few seconds. So we can check kubectn get pods. So our pod is already running. So now what we want to do, we want to expose the port so we can, uh, we can test it. To expose the port, let's have a look at what is the node port that has been uh, created. So the port that we have is 30013. And we also need the IP of our node. So we can do kubectl get node dash o wide. So this one tells us what is our IP. So we can do open this colon and then the port. So So this will obviously hang because we don't have a firewall uh, rule that uh, allows access on that port. We're gonna stop this and create the firewall rule. So let's export our node port 30013. And now what we're gonna do is create a firewall rule. So I'm creating a firewall rule called demo node port on uh, my network. And this is um, to allow TCP traffic on that port. So this one is creating the firewall rule. Okay, so now that we have a firewall rule, what we can do, we can try again to open our page. So now, as you can see, we get our Nginx welcome page. So now let's modify our deployment to have uh, something different as a home page. So in this example, what we are doing, we are creating an init container that is based on the image busy box. And we are essentially just uh, echoing a base HTML page with a different welcome. This is welcome to out of DevOps. And we are doing this in a index.html. This index.html is in the work directory. And this is mounted as a volume in our pod that is shared with the Nginx container. So if you see in the Nginx, we are mounting it in the Nginx HTML. So any index.html mounted in this location will be automatically exposed. So we're gonna execute this. So we got our thing configured. We open again our web page and refresh. So as you can see now we have welcome to out of DevOps. So what we have done so far is simple and this doesn't involve workload identity. So now let's see why we need workload identity. Let's suppose we want to, instead of generating the page inside our init container, we want to fetch bunch of pages from Google Cloud Storage. So what we can do, we can uh, fetch in the init container, we can fetch using gcloud commands from a Google Cloud Storage. So let's see how to do that. So in this example here, what we have done is we just changed the type of image. So we are doing um, a gcloud storage CP command. So we need an image that has gcloud installed. And this one is the official Google image. And what we are doing, we are pulling an index.html from a bucket that I already have provisioned. 
everything else is exactly as before so the volume mount and the volume uh, is shared with the nginx container so we run this and then we can see so let's monitor it so we can do kubectl get pods so now as you can see we start to have an init error if we want to inspect that we can do kubectl logs C. So my init container is called init. So as you can see, we have a 403 error. 403 means that we don't have permissions. And it's also specified here. Permission storage object get denied on resource. So what we need to do now is to authorize our Kubernetes service account in GCP. So to do this, we have workload identity. Workload identity essentially allows you to exchange the credential of a Kubernetes service account for the credentials of a Google service account. So we're going to create a Kubernetes service account called web. And we are also going to create a Google service account. So an IAM service account that I'm going to call web workload identity. So now these two service accounts don't have any permission. So the first thing to do, because we're gonna operate on the cloud, we're gonna give permissions to the Google service account to fetch data from the bucket. So to do that, we're gonna use this command where we do gcloud storage bucket, I am add policy binding. So this is the bucket where the index.html lives. And we're gonna give permission to this service account. And the permission we're gonna give is object viewer. So we apply this. Once the permissions are applied, what we need to do, we need a way to say to GCP that the service account can be impersonated by a Kubernetes service account. So to do this, we do an uh, IAM policy binding, another one. And this time, the permission that we need to use is workload identity user. So we are granting these permissions and we are specifying a member, which is for the GCP service account web WLI, we want to have this member that comes from Kubernetes. So this is the workload identity um, for uh, our Kubernetes cluster. And here we are specifying the namespace default and the service account name. So if you remember the, the Kubernetes service account had the name web. So now if we apply this, we are doing this binding. So they have been bound together. So now every time there is a request to Google APIs from this service account, Kubernetes service account, that will be exchanged. So this permission allow the mechanism of impersonation from uh, for the service account. Now, the last thing we need to do is to do the same on the Kubernetes side. So we need to annotate the service account and we need to annotate with this uh, special annotation that is iamgke.io GCP service account. So we are specifying what is the GCP service account that we want to impersonate. And we are saying that the service account we want to impersonate is the Google one that we created. So now we have everything in place to impersonate our service account. Let's try to modify our uh, deployment. So now, as you can see in our deployment, we are also specifying a service account and we are copying from the bucket into our work directory that is mounted directly into the Nginx. So we apply this. So kubectl get pods. So this is terminating, this is running. So now if we open our page, as you can see, now we have a more rich web page that is welcome to Auto DevOps. And this is fetched directly from Google Cloud Storage. So let's do another check. So kubectl logs our pod name. Let's see in it. So as you can see, the command completed successfully and the copy was happening from the bucket to our mounted volume. So this is it. Hope you find this useful. Let me know if you have questions down in the comments and see you in the next one. Bye.